in about uh, two weeks, I will be traveling to Venezuela, to Caracas, in order to arrange an exhibition in which I would like to try to show the series from America, which was uh, done in 92 to commemorate the 500th anniversary. And then I would also like to include some of the paintings that I did on the Iraq war, on Abu Ghraib, and on here, on New York, on 9-11, which this, this would be the most recent painting. And if possible, we will include a separate exhibition, which Julio seemed to have favored, and this uh, about uh, the Beirut, Plaza de Martir. Plaza. America series start with a discovery. What I did was to literally take each century and do one or two paintings, starting with the discovery of the arrival of uh, the Columbus. This is when I have broken up my style a little bit. In other words, this is when I used a lot of uh, blue and, uh, and I showed uh, the breakup of space in which there is opening almost at the center of each painting. There is a very important painting I did in this, which is the, called Encounter between Cortes and Montezuma. Showing Cortes holding, putting his hand on the sword, whereas Montezuma receiving him with the necklace of flowers, and, and, and then from then on, it became a, an issue of uh, uh, <laughs> extermination of the Indian race. And around um, 1973, I started a series on Beirut. It's called El Burj. This is the center of the business district. It's called, in French, Place de Martyr, and the reason for this, de Martyr, because it's in this area that they hang some of the Arab nationalists, Lebanese, Syrian, Palestinian, and others, who spoke against uh, the Ottoman rule. And they arrested them all and hanged them. So it's a martyr place. And it had one of the most famous red light districts right adjacent to it. When I was a young man, I used to go a lot, you know, visit the place. Every person, everybody in love would be curious. You have to see it. You see these women, and you feel shy, you walk around. So it was a very important subject uh, for me. Uh, it had a lot of memory, it has a lot of uh, personal uh, relation. But also there is a very important aspect. Since El Burj, the area, is called Place de Martyr, and in French, martyr with an R could be masculine or feminine. So the way I wrote it was with an E, plus the martyr, which means women. Those were the real martyr in this case. And when, when the, the plaza was destroyed during the Civil War, it became also a martyr. <laughs> so it's very appropriate. This is where we exhibited the work. We held a lot of exhibition, almost sometimes five or six times a year. In other words, during a short period of time, about three, four years, I held maybe 10 or 12 exhibitions a year of oil painting, of uh, mixed media, of, of, of uh, works on paper, pastel, watercolor, etc. And every single store here, all the way down, they were all art galleries. Even one I had exhibited was one week sham very early. I shot some of my work here once, and there was uh, James Graham up there where I sometimes bought some small pictures for my collection, and just walk over down here uh, to the Whitney Museum. From the top of my, uh, my studio up there, I could actually see part of the Whitney Museum. Of course, this was the place they had the Biennale, they had always continuous exhibition. This was really the museum that showed what's going on in contemporary art, especially on the New York scene. I came here around, took some courses with some of the professors like Rosenblum, Schiff, Jansen, uh, and others. This was actually the Graduate School of uh, Fine Art, Institute of Fine Art that taught art history. The Duke building was very famous, but also had a wonderful library 
which I was able to uh, look through so many great art books uh, and so on. This was the best art school, better than any art school, because here it, I, could, I could literally see close up and spend many hours sometimes looking at various work, whether it's uh, Goya, Delacroix, Jericho, uh, uh, or any, any of the art. Of course, now they have all the American, like Jackson Pollock and so on. Because I live to paint. Without painting, I cannot function. And there is so much, so many images in my head that I have to project them, transmit them. This is, you know, in depth, something inside my feeling, my emotions, my experiences, my ideas. I have to bring them out. I've had many obstacles, almost continuous, but I have never stopped to paint. Whether it was a success or not. And the same thing with the subject. I will continue for the rest of my life to paint the theme of war, to bring up my response, my personal experience, my vision of how I react to the subject of human suffering, human brutality, chaos, and in general, contemporary horrors of war.